Okay, welcome back. So, last time we looked at rendering this kind of black screen. That's my cat. We rendered this black screen, and that's pretty cool. But I didn't actually explain too much how it worked. So I'll go into a bit more detail. So basically, what we have is in our we have something called a buffer strategy and our graphics handle. And the buffer strategy is basically if we didn't have it, it would flicker a shit ton. So I can probably show you that if we go back to this create buffer strategy. We set it to 1, uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> but basically, what happens is we have something called a buffer strategy, and, and this is a way in which we can render without a flickering kind of thing. So if you ever play a game and it's flickering, the screen's flashing, uh, that's probably because they're not using double buffering or triple buffering. And in this buffer strategy, you see we have three, we can choose between 1, 2, or 3. And basically, this is how many buffers there are and a buffer is like a temporary storage thing and how many buffers you you have depends on is like so if you ever see a game in a menu it says enable double buffering or triple buffering triple buffering is when you have three buffers double buffering is when you have two and let's just explain with two buffers first so we have uh, our screen and then we have which is our first buffer and then we have another buffer which is our second buffer so what we do is we have our first, our character, and let's just say it's rendered at the position on X as like 50. And then let's say that we press the right key and we want to increment or go right. So we increment X by, I don't know, 2. And what we do is on our second screen, we move this player along 2 pixels. So let's just say this is 2 more pixels. And then while we're rendering on this screen, we clear this screen and then we throw back our result or we switch the buffers and that's how it works so basically we temporarily store the next date on the second buffer we then switch the buffers so that the, temp the, the buffer we drew on is now our screen and then we clear the buffer that we were just rendering and this is called double buffering and triple buffering is the same concept but with three and this just means that you can render on three different buffers individually each kind of movement so when we move along three more pixels, we can do it on this screen and then we throw it back on there. So we just switch all the buffers and it's a lot more faster and an efficient way of rendering. And basically the reason why we do this is to stop flickering because if you if we were to not have these buffers, so I'll just delete these. If we didn't have these buffers and we were like, oh let's move it along right pix uh, by two pixels, we'd have to clear this entire screen, which involves deleting everything off of it like this and we redraw it in a position so what you see is basically you basically what you see is it being cleared and then it moved along and that you literally see a flickering that's what the flickering is whereas if we have two different buffers we move it along our character uh, and we move it along on here we clear this buffer switch the buffer clear this buffer and repeat and it's a lot more faster and efficient and we're using three buffers here, but you can use two if you really want to. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. So if we run this, in fact, I can actually show you because with one, yeah, I'll show you. So let's just draw a red little player, color.red. And I'll explain how these render calls work in a second. And this is where we use our variables. So we have in x equals zero. And in the update, we'll just say x plus plus. And then we'll set the x here. And you see it should move along to the right really fast. So let's change this to, uh, base, let's just say while running, yeah, yeah, okay, we can't do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a sleep. Now if you ever, if you know what sleep is, it basically means uh, stop, stop doing things for sleep. Let's stop this thread for 16 milliseconds. And this should mean it'll be a bit slower like this. So you see there's no flickering. It's also a bit inconsistent because we're uh, using an unlocked time step, basically. So if I then say, okay, let's use one buffer, you'll see it flickers a lot more because we're clearing, and then we're moving it, and we're clearing it, and we're moving it, and when we have two, it's a lot better. I can hear noise outside, what is that noise? Let me shut my window. <clears throat> okay. So, and then we have three buffers and it's a lot better. There's no flickering, which is good. But do you see there's a slight stutter in us again because we're using our time step thing. Cool.
So that's it done. So that's how you, that's basically what we're doing at the moment. So we can just delete this, this is just an example. Okay, so how does this rendering actually work? Well, we can think of this canvas. We have a, we have a frame, so this is our frame. Inside of this frame we have, yeah, let's just say this is our frame. Inside of this frame we have our canvas. And we can think of our canvas as just a giant graph. So if I redrew this, it would be, uh, just think of an upside down graph. So you're probably used to graphs being uh, like, you're probably used to grasping like this, was a zero on the x is here and zero on the y is here. Sorry, the x is this and the y is this. And this is the same, but instead we flip it upside down. So now in our game, it's like this, the x is here still and the y is here. And it's on zero, zero. So say we drew, if I zoom in onto our graph a lot. Okay, so say we drew a character uh, bear in mind this point here is zero zero, and let's just say we wanted to draw a character on forty x forty y with a width of forty pixels and a height of forty pixels. So we go along our x axis along forty pixels. Let's just pretend uh, this is four here. So we go at forty pixels and then we go down forty pixels. So let's just say here, this is the first point for our, our character, which is a square. We then go along forty pixels, which is I don't know, say here, down forty pixels. And then we go back to our first point, down 40 pixels, and there is our square at 40, 40. So if I drew this on the actual game, just say 40, 40, boom, there is our little square. So you see it's zero, zero is the top left. Now, if you don't like this system, you can flip it, but I do not recommend you do that. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to rendering. Now, one thing I haven't shown you is the actual syntax. So what we're doing is we're setting the color to black. And then we have this get width and get height stuff. And basically this is from the canvas. So you remember how our canvas has loads of methods and we can call them without doing canvas dot. Yeah, this is one of those methods. So get width returns the width of the canvas. Height returns the height of the canvas. We could put 600 or we could put whatever, but that wouldn't work very well because if we change the size of our canvas, then we'd have to change this const a constant value instead. So instead of using that, we use the get width and the get height, and that returns the width and the height of the canvas, which is pretty useful. And we always have this black screen. So if I remove this black screen, you see it flickers, which is not ideal. So what we're doing here is we're just clearing the screen. So we're just setting it all to black. And this is the, and this is where order is important because if I render the red, it, it goes from top to bottom. So it sees the instruction. Let's render a black square from zero x zero y. To with a width of 800 pixels and a height of 800 pixels. So it's like, okay, let's render that. And you see how it renders a giant black square. And then it sees, okay, let's render a red. Let's set the color to red. So, and then we move to the, uh, we want to render a square or a rectangle from 40x, 40y with a width of 40 and the height of 40. And then it renders that. Boom. So if I say we want it to have a height of 80 pixels, this is what it looks like. You know, we want it to have a height of 120 pixels. Maybe up the width a bit to 80. There you go. That's what it looks like. Um, and the reason why this is really cool is because we can make this a bit more dynamic. So we can say in x equals 0, x plus plus, and you see it slowly gets bigger. And you can do some really interesting stuff with this. Oh, so sorry, it was still running. Okay, so that's how that works. And the color thing, I was a bit confused when I first learned about it. And basically, you can think of it as pick up a black pen, draw a rectangle. Now, if we if we didn't pick up this red pen, this rectangle would also be black. So we pick up a red pen, and then we draw this rectangle here. Okay, so that's all. That's all you got to know. Um, and again, the order matters. So if I was to pick up the red pen and draw a red rectangle, then pick up a black pen and draw the black rectangle, you wouldn't see it because the black rectangle is on top of in top of the uh, red rectangle. So remember order counts as well. Can't seem to copy and paste these. There we go. Anyway, that's how the rendering works. There's a few more shapes so you can do set the color to say orange. And we can fill an oval. So 40 40 40 40. Let's do this this will overlap our triangle our square. Uh, we can also, in Eclipse, you can do something called live debugging or hot swapping. 
uh, and you can only do this outside of this method. So if it's inside this method, it won't work. So if I put so, so swag here, it won't print out swag. Uh, if I remove this update call and save it, it won't print the update call, as you can see. If I was to remove this, uh, if I was to move this over by 80 pixels, it moves over by 80 pixels. I could change the color to green, change the color to green. Now this is kind of limited, and the more you use it, the more you understand how it works. The hot swapping, but that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really useful when you're debugging, so I can change the order. So if I move this, say, to 60, you'll see how it's underneath. And if I move the order, you'll see how it's on top. So the order does matter. Um, oh, you got to remember that. And then let's say we can do another circle uh, on the Y. So the Y goes down to 80. And there you go. You have this weird B thing. And we can we can you be a bit more efficient. So instead of saying color red, so this would also work. Or we can say we know the color is going to be red, so we just delete these, and it's going to be red until you set it to another color. And we change it to orange. And there you go. That's that's pretty much all there is to it. That is how the rendering works. There's a few more uh, different types. So you can also do draw rect, which means draw the outline. Let's just say 120, 120, 80, 100. And this will draw the outline of a rectangle. And we can draw an oval. Uh, there's a few more. String, yeah, that's a different one I have to show you. There's images, which I'll show you later. Polygons are a bit more weirder. So draw a, oh yeah, draw, drawing lines, which is, yeah, like this. Uh, I don't remember the coordinates. X1, Y1. Yes, yeah, so these are a little weirder. So you see how the this is no longer the width and the height, but a second point. So you'd have to do 120 plus 80, which is 200. 120 plus that, which is 220. And that's what we had. So it's, it's x1, y1, which is the first point. x2, y2, which is the second point. So I can make this a bit less steeper. So I can say 180. Um, more steeper. You get the idea. So that's how that works. Uh, we also have, what else do we have? Oh yes, text. So you can say draw, draw string, string. Let's just say hi, 80, 80. And this only takes an X and a Y. So this will draw high underneath this. So let's just set this to red. And you see it draws high really small. I'll just draw my name. Let's move it back over to 40, for example. And there it is. So what we can actually do is we can uh, change the fonts as well and this is where our initialization comes to handy because it's actually an optimization so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new font so we say private font my font equals new font actually no it's not initialize it there so I'm actually going to do the, the stupid thing and I'm going to initialize it in the update method and you'll see why this is bad equals new font let's just say sego UI which is a Windows font we need to have it let's have a plain font so no bold or italics you can choose italic or bold or whatever I just choose plain and a font size so 24 now we can apply the font so g dot set font my font and if I run this it works and if I run the task manager processes Java W this is our process we have CPU usage of 0 memory of 46 48 46 47 48 is this the right one yeah it is okay 51, so it's slowly getting better. And this is all from our strings. So if I was in, in a small optimization, uh, actually, I'll tell you why this is wrong. So the reason why this was wrong because this update method has been called a lot of times. We don't know how many times, but it's been called a lot of times. Uh, so basically, we're making this my font every, like, what, like a thousand times a second, which is really bad. So a not slight optimization we can do is we just move this to the init method. And then we stop this and we have to restart it. And then it only gets created once. And then our memory usage should be a lot better. It's not really noticeable. Um, and I could have, there's an even worse thing you can do, which is basically, so if I say font my font equals, let's do that. And that's, that's even worse for your performance. Like really bad. But anyway, that's about all I can do for this kind of tutorial.
uh, it's kind of it's kind of annoying because each episode should only be 15 minutes. I did increase the time so I can go over 15 minutes, but I don't want to go over too much. So that's about it for the, this kind of tutorial lesson, whatever guide video. This video is over. Uh, I really suggest you play around with all of these kind of techniques because they really the more you play around with it, the more accustomed you'll be to it. So it's pretty important that you kind of get the idea of how it works. Just have a play of it. See how it goes, see what other things you can do. I'll go over a few more in the next video, uh, including image loading as well. And then we'll start looking at different kind of game mechanics. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.